In the previous step, we have configured log4j framework. What I'll recommend you to do is just try and look at the log which is generated. So try and see if you can get deeper understanding by looking at what is being logged in there. In this step, let's move on to the real functionality. So what we'll do is we'll try and show user ID and password on the welcome page. So we were try typing in user ID and password. I mean, we showed the login page. So now what we would do is we would create a welcome page where we would show the user ID and password. For now, we would not be using Spring Security. So Spring Security is really useful framework for authentication. We will not use it for now. What we'll try and make use of in this particular video is something called a modal map. So earlier in the architecture diagram of Spring MVC, we saw that something called modal is passed back from the controller to the dispatcher servlet and from dispatcher servlet to the view. So we'll understand a little bit more about the modal map. That's modal. And also we would use something called request param. So these are the two important things that we would be focusing on in this particular step. Let's get started. The first thing I would want to do is go to the login.jsp and redirect the request to the Spring MVC controller. So right now it's slash login.do. So it's going to the servlet, I mean servlet Java EE servlet that we created earlier, but I would want this request to go to the Spring MVC controller. So I would want to move it to Spring MVC slash login. So I don't want the error message coming in from the Java EE servlet. I would want to now switch over to the Spring MVC servlet. So I've changed this to Spring hyphen MVC slash login. So that's the first change we have done. Now what I'll do is I'll do a login.do. We want to use the Spring MVC stuff. So I have to type in Spring MVC slash login. And now the username and password comes up. So now I can type in the name. So the name which I want to type in is let's uh, type in. And you see that I'm going back to the same page. So what's happening in the background? Let's do an inspect element network tab. I would type in a name and a password. What is happening? What we see is that a post request is being created. A post request is being created and sent to Spring MVC login. And what is the content of the particular request? Let's check that. So the content is in the params tab and it says name is name, password is password. That's very good. So that's what I sent. But the response which is coming back is still the same thing. What, how, what is happening? So Spring MVC, login. Spring MVC would take it to the dispatcher servlet. Login would take it to the login controller. So let's open login controller up. Mm -hmm. Login controller slash login. So we see that value is equal to slash login. So this particular method is now configured to handle everything. I mean, irrespective of the method. So earlier we were sending get request. So the first request which we sent to this is a get request. This is, the con this is the thing which is handling it. And even when I send a post request, so when I said even that is being handled in here because I've not specified a method in here. This method would handle any request method which comes to this. Now, I would want to restrict this. How do I do that? It's by adding in a method which is request method dot. I would want this method to only handle the get request. So in the HTTP request, there are a couple of alternatives, get and post. Actually, there are more. There are other things like put, delete and other stuff where we will not get into the, during this course. In this course, the HTTP methods that we would be discussing about would be get and post. Get request is fired when I type some something into URL. So I type logging in, login into the URL bar, it sends a get request. When I type in a name and a password, and I submit the form, it sends a post request. The reason why this sends a post request is also because in the login.jsp, if we look at it, we have configured a method as post. If you remove this and give it a try, then even this would send a get request. So that's the get and the post request. So now this particular request would only handle get request. Let's see what would happen. So let's go ahead and try playing around with it. So let's, we are sending a get request when we type something into URL. Now I'm typing a name and a password, something. And now you would see that I'm getting a HTTP status 405. That's basically saying that request method post is not supported. Because 
in this controller, I mean in the login URL, the only method which is supported right now is get. The post method is not really supported. So if you want to support post and do a different thing there, how do we do that? That's basically what we would be doing. So now I would add in a new method, post. Actually say hello does not really uh, make sense. So I'll call it show login page. And this, actually this method name does not really matter. You can call it method one, method two, but I really care about having good names in there, show login page, and this should be called now as handle login request or have handle login post. I mean, whichever makes sense to you, but which gives a good description of what it's doing. So now I wouldn't want to return login. What I would want to do is I would want to send the user back to the welcome page. So what we have is a welcome page already created. It has nothing. It's very simple page. I mean, it's in the same folder as your, it's in the same folder as views. This was the one which we created earlier uh, during the introduction to servlets and JSP. And this displays welcome dollar name. That's it. That's basically what it does. I'm going to refresh this so that it sends the same request again. We go to the welcome page. That's clear. So now we are at the welcome page, but the name is not coming up. Let's see how to pick up the name. So basically what we are doing now is we are redirecting it to the welcome page. So a post request goes to the welcome. Get request goes to the login. Play around with it for a little while. The get request goes to login page. Post request goes to the welcome page. But the welcome page is not showing the name that we are typing in. So I would want to accept the request parameter. The usual way we were doing it in the login servlet, how do we do that? We do a request.get parameter. So what we used to do is we used to do a request.get parameter and we used to set it into the request as an attribute. So that's the step which we used to do in the usual servlet JSP model. But in the Spring MVC approach, the way we would do that is by using something called a request param. So the first thing I would want to do is to get the parameter from the request. How do I do that? Is by adding a parameter to this method. I pressed control space bar so that it's imported and what's the type of the request param? It's string and the name of the request param. So what's the name that we gave to name in the thing? So it's name. So I should use the same name in here. So once you use the same name in here, you don't need to specify an attribute on the request param. So I would use the same name on the variable as it is on the form parameter. So name and name now. So that's good enough. So now I have added in a request parameter string name. This is not really recommended doing a sysout, not the best practice possible, but I'll just start with a sysout. So now I'll wait for the controller to reload. That's done and refresh. The name doesn't still come on the page. That's good. That's not a problem. But you can see that name is printed. So the value name, let's pass in a different value actually. Let's do name 123 and submit query. You'd see that name 123 is now printed on the console. So the request name is now coming in. I like doing things step by step. So uh, when I change something, I would want to make sure that this value is coming in here. And then we will look at how to send it to the JSP. So the first thing is, whatever we typed in the request, it's in Java, it's in here, in the name. So that's done using the at request param. Now let's now see how we would put it to the JSP. So the next thing we want to do is, we got the name, but we want to show it on the JSP. How do we do that? There was a concept that we looked at in the architecture diagram called modal. So we use the modal to pass information between the controller and the view. And the way you can add in a modal to any method is by adding a parameter called modal map. So modal map, modal. I'm adding this in. Control space bar, it would import the modal map. You can see it imported in here. And now I can put the name in the modal. So I can say modal dot put the name that we want to give it to it and the value that I want to put in. So model dot put name. So now I'll remove this is out. Now it's in the model. So whatever is in the model will be directly available to the view. 
So I am putting this in the model and Spring Framework would make sure that this model is available to the view. That's the magic of the Spring Framework. So compared to earlier work which we did with servlets, Spring MVC makes it really easy. We don't need to do a request.get parameter. We don't need to set a request attribute. All that we need to do is put a request param, then the value is there and then put it into model. Whatever you would want to make available to the view, you put it in the model and that model would be available for the view. So now that's it. That's the change I made and now you would see I just do a refresh on the page. Welcome name one, two, three. That's basically the name which we typed in earlier. Let's do that again. Login and let's type in in 28 minutes. Aha, welcome in 28 minutes. That's perfect. Okay, that's very good. Now, I would want to also add in password. So the way I would add in password, very simple, right? So request param string password. Again, I can put it in the model password password. If you remember the login.jsp, I mean the welcome.jsp, it did not have anything on the password. So what I'll do is I'll not really use it to authenticate, but I'll just type it in. This is not really a secure practice. I mean, uh, you would never see an application which d does this, but we are just starting and we have all the scope to play around. So I would just type in password. Let's see if this works. Let's go to the login name. I would type in in 28 minutes and I'll type in a password, a long one. Aha. Method welcome in 28 minutes and password is you're funny. That's perfect. So now you'd see that when there is a login, when there's a get. So when I type something in the URL, get request gets. So this is sending a HTTP get request. Get request goes to the login get method. Login get method uh, is show login page get method and then when I type in a name and password this fires in a post request and the post request is handled by handle login request and it prints the name and the password on the screen and if you see the params it sends the names and the params in and the entire response is down here. This is not something that you typically do in applications, but for understanding the request param, the modal attributes, I think this was a good start. So this was the video where we first encountered the modal. Modal is something which is passed between the controller and the view. So if from the controller, I want to make anything available to the view. So I, in this controller, login controller, I want to make a value available to the view welcome.jsp, I put it in the model. And who makes it available? So what happens is when I invoke a URL, who's the first one which who is called inside the Spring MVC framework? Dispatcher servlet. So dispatcher servlet calls the login, gets the modal back. So what we are sending back is the modal also. We are not just sending back the welc sending the welcome back. But Spring Framework also makes this model available to the dispatcher servlet. So then the dispatcher servlet would call the view, which is the welcome.jsp, with the input as model. So this model is made available to the view, and that's how we see the username and the password on the screen right here. That's a lot of ground that we have covered in the last five steps. Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At In 28 Minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You'll find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You'd find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.